Incredible. Solar tech. Solar cells. Brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. Could be crystal grown, folks. Crystal grown. That's what we're talking. We're talking crystal grown. Solar tech breakthrough announcement that could revolutionize solar cells. The promise of crystal grown solar cells was impeded by complexity. Uh, but that complexity may have been broken. As scientists from Tohoku University have announced a new solar tech breakthrough that could bring crystals to your self-sustaining home. That's right, self-sustaining home. Y'all like that, right? So this is from Eureka Alert. Large tin monosulfide crystal opens pathway for next generation solar cells. Tin monosulfide is a promising, oh that's SNS to you, may SNS don't you know, is a promising material used for next generation solar cells because of its nano, non-toxic, non-toxic. I love, you know you think of, think about, go with me here for a second, I know it's a little bit of a distraction, but it needs to be done. You take a word like non-toxic, non-toxic, whatever, non say non-toxic. Now it's it's something else. Now it's uh, it sounds like I don't know. It sounds like what kind of line wine would you like? I would like. Would you like the non-toxic or the toxic? Ooh, the toxic sounds nice. <laughs> don't don't pick the toxic. Don't don't even if it sounds pretty. So back to the story. That was a needless diversion that was needed tin monosulfide is a promising material used for next generation solar cells because of its non-toxic characteristics and abundance in addition to its excellent photovoltaic properties sakiko kawanishi and iseo suzuki led a team that has succeeded in growing large single crystals of the sns sns there's a song by uh Oh, man. Joseph the Band. Joseph the Band, which is, I think, Three Sisters. It's called SOS. Look it up. It's a great song. I don't know why I'm tying it in, but I am. Which can provide a pathway for the fabrication of SNS solar cells with a higher conversion efficiency. Because right now, if I if I wasn't going to get copy striked, I'd probably have that be the background of this segment right now. This particular part of this, this segment of this this one-off show remember the title of the one-off show i just want to remember this is the first episode of the first season and it's also the last episode of the last season of incredible solar tech solar cells could be crystal crop the manufacturing of such solar cells has until now proved difficult due to the complexity of fabricating type fabricating n type sns contrast to the easily fabrication P type SNS. I was just talking about this down at. I was getting a pack of cigarettes the other day, and uh, the cashier is like, "Yo, you know, these N types are killing us." I was like, "I know it." Why don't they try the P types? Like, come on, it's ridiculous. They can't do the P types. And then right afterwards, to solve this problem, the team designed an original feed composition used for the flux growth of of SNS crystals. This is something that had not been successfully tried before, trialed before. A dramatic change appeared in the grown crystals by halogen addition. That is, enlargement of the crystal size to a maximum 24 mm millimeters in width. Whoa, 24 millimeters. I mean, you know, an AR-15 is like 5.56 uh, millimeters? And this is like 24 millimeters. That is some biggie. That's a biggie, biggie. When you think about 50 millimeter, you pick 50 millimeter shell. Well, 24 millimeter shell. Picture it. That's a big fatty. That's a serious old big old fatty, fatty pats. In addition to including an N-type conduction characteristic. And then there's more. And then I was like, you know what? This is science. This is too scientific for me. 
But listen, I've got more for you because I did uh, I did come up with some uh, something else that I thought was uh, worth noting in and along while we're, while we're at it, just to to, to talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that are going on here. Uh, I mean, let's uh, let's let's first go to. Uh, Let's just go to, oh, man, I don't have the right setting here. I'm going to get to solar tech, solar crystals. There we go. Solar tech, solar crystals. That's our phrase that we're focusing on. And let's see what Google says when you search for Google News for those phrase. Solar tech, solar crystals. You see, from the Guardian, UK firm Solar Power Breakthrough could make world's most efficient panels by 2021. That's a pretty dramatic statement. SciTech Daily. SNS crystals open pathway for improved next generation solar cells. And now we know it's because of that... Uh, that uh, the P in the N? Is it the N that we want? Which one do we want? Which one do we want? We want the P type. We want the P type, not the N type, the P type. P P's a good good letter. I like the letter P. Don't read too much in that. Business outline of solar well, go ahead. Solar grade multi crystal silicon ingot market twenty twenty five. There's a solar grade multi crystal silicon incon mark. Okay. Okay. Business I'm just gonna Solar grade multi crystal silicon ingot mar ingot market. There's a market for that. That sounds like uh, Blade Runner. It's like Blade Runner. We're living in Blade Blade, Blade Runner land now. That's where we're at. That's where we're at. Let's go to this one though on the SciTech Daily. There's this story. Princeton chemists resolve origins of perovskite instability and drive for more efficient solar cells. So this is uh, researchers in the in the in the Carver Group at the Princeton University Department of Chemistry have demystified the reasons for instability in an inorganic perovskite that has attracted wide attention for its potential in creating highly efficient solar cells. Wouldn't you know? Wouldn't you know? I know those, those fine to folks in Tokyo are just... Is it, is it, was that in Tokyo? No. To oh, no. See? Tokyo. That's right. Tohoku, Tohoku University. I don't know where that's at. Okay. So the fine folks there in, uh, in the to I know they got their little thing, but listen. Listen what we got. We got crystals, too, man. We got crystals. We got some... Just listen. Check this out. Researchers in the CAVA group at the Princeton University Department of Chemistry have demystified the reasons for instability in an inorganic pair of skite and <coughs> distracted wide attention to <coughs> the potential creating or potential in creating highly efficient solar cells using single crystal X-ray diffraction performed at Princeton University and X-ray pair distribution function measurements performed at the Brookhaven National Laboratory, Princeton Department of Chemistry researchers detected that the source of thermodynamic instability in the... Oh gosh, there's too much word. In the halide perovskite cesium lead iodide is the organic cesium atom and its rattling behavior within the crystal structure. So they figured out what's causing it. Uh, so let's read this again. Using crystal, single crystal X-ray diffraction performed at Princeton University. I don't need to read that. Uh, and X-ray pair distribution function measurements. Uh, researchers detected that the source of the instability is the inorganic cesium atom. It's the rattling of the cesium atom. That's the problem. If you want to make a solar cell with unmodified cesium lead iodide, it's going to be very hard to work around this and stabilize the material, said Strauss. You have to find a way to stabilize it that works around the fact that the cesium atom is a little bit too small in Poco. A couple of ways people have tried to chemically modify this uh, thing. I'm not going to repeat all that CSB BL3 crap. And they work okay, but there's no point in just trying to make solar cells out of this bulk material without doing fancy things to it. 
That was a beautiful quote. I don't know. I, that, was, that was wonderful. Detailed structural information in the paper suggests methods to stabilize the perovskite. Phrase of CSBPPPPP. You know what? I didn't realize I wasn't on here. I need to switch over to here. Detailed structural information in the paper suggests methods to stabilize the perovskite phase of, of that thing. That is, I mean, the, the, just... I don't know. I, I feel like revisiting the last quote. I mean, you just listen to the Strauss, whoever you are. I love it. I love I love what you have to say here, ready? If you want to make a solar cell with unmodified cesium lead iodide, it's going to be very hard to work around this and stabilize this material. You have to find a way to stabilize it that works around the fact that this cesium atom is a a little bit too small. And there are a couple of ways people have tried to chemically modify this and well, they work okay, but there's no point in just trying to make solar cells out of this bulk material without doing fancy things to it. I mean, that is that is just like, that's a, I'm not sure if that's like a villain speech just before he unleashes his mechanism that controls human minds or if that's a hero's speech just before he unleashes the technology that will free the world and uh, or, or she or they or whoever uh, it, it's just one of those that's a beautiful speech I thank you for that Strauss whoever you are detailed structural information in the paper suggests methods to stabilize the perovskite perovskite phase of this thing and thus improve the stability of halide perovskite solar cells. The paper also reveals the limitations of tolerance factor models in predicting stability for halide perovskites. But don't listen to that. Most of these models currently predict that this thing should be stable. Oh, that's good. Should be stable. So the other one was like, yo, we've got this. We nailed this. Look at this. This is awesome. And the other one was like, yeah, this is pretty awesome, but maybe. I don't know. But anyway. Both of these are really promising, and these are just two of many stories about a lot of the solar tech breakthroughs that are occurring. And you know, I'm extremely, and you watch the shows, these one-off, uh, these episodes, these whatever these things are. These, uh, you know, it's the first season of the first, uh, of the first episode of the first season, also the last episode of the last season shows. These are the shows. Uh, You'll see a trend here as I regularly uh, focus on technologies like these. You know, everybody is trying to figure out with the voting and the screaming and the shouting. And meanwhile, there is this. There is this. There is these opportunities right before us. Now, maybe these things aren't immediately going to be available to us. But now, the thing is, the thing is what we want. We want that technology. We want these breakthroughs. And we want to unleash them onto the world. We want everyone to be able to build to build these things in their own labs, have community manufacturing centers where everybody can just print their own crap most of the time and at the larger stuff and the local stuff. If you need something to replace a part of one of your thingy jobs, you got like small 3D printing stuff. You could do the job. You can, I mean, there's so many possibilities that are opening up right here. I can imagine what it'd be like if you can one day grow your own uh, 24 millimeter crystal bad boys that turn your... Uh, your roof into a mega power plant or some such uh some such affair and and yeah there's so many opportunities out here and this is just one of them and i'm gonna make sure that i regularly uh i regularly cover these kinds of stories because this is where there are so many more opportunities for humanity to build the kind of world that they want for individuals small groups that especially for those of us that don't fit in the unaffiliated, the ones that just, I'm not an unaffiliated by choice. I just find myself being an unaffiliated. I don't fully fit in anywhere. I find problems with all of y'alls and with myself. But I mean, I just, I just don't find a club that I feel like I belong to. And the only club I think I would belong to is an unaffiliated, an affiliated club, which, well, it would immediately out do its, uh, its intent if it uh, became a club so it's kind of a problem 
it's kind of a problem, but I'll work through it. I'm going to cover uh, as we go through. I got I got stories even even now scheduled to go out that will offer. It's not just the politics. It's not just the dramas and the bombs and the shootings and all that. There are so many more things out there that give us opportunity in the here and now. Just recently, I just did a little thing where uh, our family we we got a bunch of uh, walkie talkie things. And these things are, they got a range of like 16 miles. So we got like a bunch of walkie talkies for uh, basically for the kids, if you will, for a bunch of kids for, well, well not, some of them are older, like they're teenagers, but still it's uh, these things are, are, are planting the seeds. Like how, how cool is it for them to have this, this, this network of connection that isn't so reliant on so many of the large scale systems, these, even these just little walkie talkies so much more freedom uh for these they can they can communicate directly with one another they don't need a uh, and there's so many other solutions like that as well and this is just this is just the tip of the iceberg folks so you keep watching these uh these uh, i guess these one off uh, uh podcast series all these different every every two day every maybe twice a day hopefully at least once a day but 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 hopefully twice a day monday through friday I will I will create a new podcast and put it out and then it'll be done, and then hopefully then that the, the, the one in the morning and one in the evening seven in the morning and seven in the evening and I go by Eastern Standard Time because that's God's time because that's the way it is. All right, well I think I'll end it here. I thank you all for watching Incredible Solar Tech. Solar cells could be crystal grown. Uh, we'll see you on the on on the next uh, podcast series that I decide to create.